Plus, up over Mark Lobiner, TigerFitness.com. Check it out. So I want to go over some health things that can hopefully help you reach your goals, that can hopefully help you live a long life, that can hopefully help you feel better and mitigate perhaps some of the damage you did as a younger person. Let's say you're getting up there in age. Let's say that you drank in the past. Let's say that you took anabolic steroids in the past. You know, we can't undo our past. I cannot undo the steroid cycle as I've done. I just can't undo them. What I can do is mitigate all the damage that I've done and the damage is still there. You can't take it away. But how do you move forward and stop the damage or potentially eradicate or alleviate some of the damage that was done? Can we do that? Well, bottom line is we know that the body likes to heal, right? When smokers stop smoking, their lungs literally clean out over time. Are they as good as someone who never smoked before? No. Do they get better? Yes. As far as livers go, let's say you took a lot of oral steroids or you did a lot of drinking in college. At the end of the day, your liver is very resilient. So what I want to go over is how do we build health as we move forward from our past? Or how do we, if we're currently competing in bodybuilding or whatever, how do we mitigate some of the risks that we are taking by using these steroids? How do we, if we like to go out drinking on weekends, how do we mitigate some of that alcohol use? And I already went over, I did a video on my metabolic panel. Here it is right here. And all my levels are normal. From AST to ALT, my glucose is 95, my insulin is 1.6, AST is 31, ALT is 31, everything is within normal range. Now, people will argue that athletes, especially like AST and ALT, don't need to be in normal range. I argue that maybe not, but why can't we aim to be in normal range? If we can be in normal range for the general population and do the epic, cool things we do, building big muscles, training really hard, even if you're a natural lifter, you're, you're, you're literally beating your body up to the point where it alters your liver enzymes. So how can we mitigate that to make that less stressful in the body? Right away, I said this in the last video, everybody should take ambrosia nectar every single day. It's the greatest organ and overall health product ever created. Okay, that's number one. Everybody should take that daily. If there's only one supplement you buy, buy Ambrosia Nectar. So today I'd like to go into my lipid profile. And I'd also like to talk about social media idiots and how we are completely screwing the pooch, completely dropping the ball on doing what we should be doing. That's helping people healthy, stay healthy and reach their goals at the same time. When in reality, we just have a bunch of scumbags who just want to clickbait. Now, there are good channels. I believe that a lot of the information Greg Doucette gives out is actually very healthy information like main gaining. While I don't think it's the most optimal way to gain, he's telling people not to get too fat. I think that's great. Derek at More Plates, More Dates. Very smart individual. Talks a lot about mitigating health issues. So my lipid panel, let's go over it now. I'm going to post it on the screen. Here it is. My cholesterol, 183, normal range is less than 200. Triglycerides is 45, zero to 50 is normal range. HDL is 44, the uh, greater than 40 is normal range. Non-HDL is 139, zero to 160 is normal range. LDL is 130, zero to 130 is normal range. LDL is a little bit high, but as someone on TRT, as someone who eats a lot of red meat, this is, I'm happy it's in normal range. That means that something I'm doing, whether it's drinking enough water, whether it's exercising, my low intensity cardio, my high intensity cardio, my adequate sleep, which I do get most of the time. Some, some weeks I, I do lack due to work um, obligations. And nectar, I'm telling you what, nectar. I also take MTS Nutrition Oxbile, MTS Nutrition Immortal. Those are the main ones, you know, um, uh, nutrient driver with berberine helps tremendously. Cholesterol to HDL is 4.2. Normal is 0 0.0 to 5. So what I'm getting at is we, while 
the carnivore guys, and I got a lot of flack for saying this in the last video, my last post, the carnivore guys say that if you're on a ketogenic diet, I believe Dr. Sean Baker posted his LDL was somewhere in like the 270 or something. It was crazy high. And he said that, well, if you're eating like this, you shouldn't care about LDL. And a lot of doctors with new data say that LDL doesn't matter. And I'm not going to argue with that. Again, not my area of expertise. What I do know is that when I go get blood work, I aim to have nothing red. When you get something out of normal range, it turns up red. It comes up usually red, or it'll say a big H next to it, right? That scares the living shit out of me. Now, that might be ignorant, but when I get blood work done, I want everything to be normal. And if you notice, my doctor, Dr. Kurt at Hormone Health and Wellness, look at all this blood work. For example, my prostate, my PSA is 0.37. Normal range is zero to four. Again, ambrosia nectar has ingredients for prostate and bladder health. You know, you go through all this stuff, right? You got um, folate. I even test folate. Normal range is 4.8 to 24.2. Result is 20, right? Sex hormone uh, binding globulin. Result is 15. Normal range is 10 to 50, right? So you go over all of this stuff, T3, Normal range is 2.3 to 4.2. Result is 3.7. And I do take Armour Thyroid um, from my doctor. Um, I'll link them down below. Uh, anyone in the USA can use my, F, my free T4. 1.4. Normal range is 0.9 to 1.7. You know, I go over all this stuff. And my IGF, even though I supplement with HGH, my result was 157. Normal range is 52 to 328. Right? So my Z-score is 0.2. Normal range is negative two to two. So what I'm getting at is as influencers, as people with a platform, we should be aiming to help people not die, period. Um, I got basically, the reason my views are low, one of the reasons, one is that a lot of my, when I get noticed in public, it's not by people who follow Chris Bumstead, 16 year olds, 17 year olds. When I get recognized in public, like I did at Dollywood when I was there this week by like 10 people, they're usually 40 years old or more. And I started this channel in 2011 and I started getting social media at Salvation in, in 2007. And Lo and be and the message boards in tw before that in 2000. So a lot of my subscribers have just basically aged out. It is what it is. So when I look at, when I look at like everything I do, like when, when the uh, pandemic hit, I was the first one to come out and say, Hey, I don't know what this thing is before it even had a name, but you know what? Vitamin D might not help, but it can't hurt. And for that, I got shadow banned by these lovely people at YouTube, which it's their right, I guess, their platform, whatever. Um, what is that, section 258 or whatever? You know, at the end of the day, I'm just here to say what I think will help people. And if you've noticed, I've gotten away from clickbait. I'll do some bodybuilding stuff, like who's going to place top three at the Olympia? Because I'm a pro bodybuilder, and I really fucking love talking about it. But, and I'll talk about financial stuff and I'll post my kids, but I'm not doing like, is the rock natty or not? You know, I'm just not doing that. Is Mike O'Hearn natty or not? Cause God knows we need another Mike O'Hearn natty or not video, you know, but what I get really pissed off at, and I used to love the guy we used to do video. We've done videos together and that's Cali muscle. Like he had a absolute wonderful opportunity after surviving two heart attacks god bless the fact he's still alive i do not wish death on anybody okay except now nah, i'm not going to say their word that'll get me shadow banned or banned from youtube actually because there's one guy in the u.s government i really don't like a couple of them who shut us down but anyway regardless i don't wish death upon cali muscle i really don't i want him to fucking wake up and I want him to realize what he's doing is not only irresponsible to him and his family, it's irresponsible to everybody. Here's why. He had an opportunity to come out and say, I'm going to clean up my diet, going to clean up my health, and I'm going to show everybody how to live a long, healthy life. And he said that. And so now we have videos of him mukbanging eating a bunch of bullshit food, a bunch of greasy fried food, things that contribute to heart disease and heart attacks, okay? Number one. Number two, the guy, and I'm not going to call him an idiot. I almost said the idiot, but I'm not going to call him an idiot. The guy, 
He goes out. And he says that whey protein is bad for you. Creatine is bad for you. And yet the guys over there eating fried food, mukbanging it to get views. When you have a platform like that, I understand that's how he pays his bills. I understand he doesn't have a real job. I understand that social media is his thing. But there comes a time when your call to action, when your call is to help people. And he could have easily grifted off the whole I'm healthy now thing. And, you know, shown what a healthy meal is. Instead, we saw a meal with, you know, egg whites and hash browns, fried potatoes. So I look at social media and I look at all the fakery and I almost think that's a good thing because it's better than unhealthy clickbait. I'd rather have someone look at a Brazilian butt lift or a fake natty than a guy who's had two heart attacks and is muckabanging on fried foods. So here's what I'm gonna get at, guys. Like, a lot of what you see on the internet is pure bullshit clickbait. And you should be following people that are helping to enrich your mind, enrich your body, enrich your soul, enrich your knowledge, learn new things, political channels that help you learn, political channels perhaps that help you learn history, help you learn about our laws, our constitution. If you're in another country, about your country's laws, your constitution, so you know what you're dealing with. Um, there's a lot out there to learn, and there's a lot of great information, but entertainment takes over. Same reason sometimes I switch on to Spotify and listen to Little John go, oh, skeet, 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 instead of listening to a podcast by Andrew Huberman or Joe Rogan where I can actually enrich my mind. We waste our time with this bullshit. My fear is that a lot of people are gullible. So they see a very fit looking guy eating all this bullshit, putting this bullshit into his body, spewing out lies about protein powder being bad for you while eating fried food. And I'm sitting here and look, man, I have not lived that healthy of a life overall. I've competed at a high level in bodybuilding and I still fucking do. But I'm looking at ways to mitigate things. I'm literally creating supplements to mitigate a lot of the issues that people have. And let me put it to you this way. We came out with Nectar. I didn't expect to sell much of it. Who the fuck cares about organ health? People are trying to get huge, right? We came out with it anyway. and We believed in it so much. It's sold. So who do you follow? What do you do? If people are strictly clickbait, don't do it. Look, I've been actually listening to a lot of that Andrew Tate guy because I didn't know what he was about. He's actually saying a lot of things that are teaching me to think a little bit differently. Okay, I'm not saying I agree with everything he says. I agree with a lot of what he says. I'm not afraid to say that, but I don't know everything he says. I haven't listened that much. I listened to like an hour while driving of his uh, interview with Pierce Morgan. So who do you believe? Who do you trust? Number one, Mike Rashid. You look at a guy who lives the lifestyle. You look at a guy who actually has businesses, who cares about his body, cares about his health, has gone so much as to try pescatarianism and veganism because he experiments and he figures out what's best for his health. You know, you look at, you look at other people on this, you know, social medium, you know, it's like you look at people who preach truth, who preach reality. Um, you got to love that. Who is that guy? High intensity health. He sells his own product line. He sells these electrolytes. He has some concepts that are out there, but this is a guy who said a lot of unpopular things to try and make people healthy during the pandemic. Look at Alan Roberts. Here's a guy who's literally been banned from every social media platform more times than we have fingers on our hands and feet. And yet he keeps coming back because he really, really, really not, look, Alan, if he's not my best friend, he's damn close. I'll tell you this. He really fucking cares. So who cares? I'll tell you who cares. The people I surround myself with fucking care because I'm not going to surround myself with douchebags. Chris Jones, he cares. He cares. He might be out there, but he truly cares about his people, he calls them, right? Or what? I forgot what he gave Something like that, right? Like, so you look around, there's plenty of opportunities to get great information out there. And as social media channels, whether you're at a hundred followers or a million or 10 billion, your sphere of influence is large relative to what the average person on the street has. So it should be our goal to help people, number one, 
clickbait bullshit, and I have done it. I've done eating challenges. I've done all that. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you simply state that this is just fucking fun stuff we're doing because we can't all live perfectly, right? We're, we're going we're gonna to have French fries. We're going we're gonna to have a drink here and there, right? We're going to... You know, we're going to pour some liquor out for the homies. But at the end of the day, the overall message we need to con- we need to convey is that of health and positivity. But what, what frustrates me and the reason why I was so excited to be able to get current blood work and post it is because I talk a lot of shit. Because I'm out here and I'm telling you guys a lot of things that are, are to do with health, right? I tell you how to, you know that some things will help you have better health markers. I tell you that you should pay attention to your blood work. I tell you that you should see your doctor. I tell you that you can do TRT or HRT if you need it and you're under doctor supervision. I just don't tell you to to grab the largest vial and syringe you see and inject in whatever body part you can find with enough room to inject in because everything we do in life has consequences. Whether it's steroids whether it's aspirin, whether it's alcohol, every choice we make affects our day-to-day, affects our long-term, affects if we live till 70 or 90. So our goal here, since this is a health and fitness channel and we are in the health and fitness arena, other than some business stuff I love to put on here, is we need to educate people on how to be better. So if you are a fitness influencer, and you're posting videos for clickbait of you eating fried food, you know what, that's, that's your right to do it. Mukbang videos get great views. Um, I personally think they're disgusting. Who is that guy, that avocado fucker? Whatever. Um, at the end of the day, I think that we all owe to everybody following us some truth and honesty. And a lot of people don't have the genetics. Some people have long health genetics. And I'll tell you what, you know, when I got skin cancer, first thing I did is I, I was talking about, okay, what, what can we do to mitigate this? How can I get this message out to people? How can I get as many people to get screenings as possible? That was my first goal. Now, if you have a heart attack, your goal would be to educate people on how not to get heart attacks. It wouldn't be to go to church's chicken and a pizza joint and sit down with black gloves on and eat like a pig Because that's what sends people to the hospital. That's what causes heart disease. That's what causes heart attacks. Is people overindulging. Obesity is the number one comorbidity for every fucking disease. It's gonna be a part of why you die, assuming you die of natural causes. If you're fat or you smoke, I can guarantee you that those will be the causes of your death unless you fall out of an airplane or get hit by a fucking car or struck by lightning. That's what's going to fucking kill you most likely. You're watching these videos in the fitness space. You're watching these videos to improve your appearance both inside and out and for a little bit of entertainment. So the minute we put entertainment before the other two is the minute we've lost the plot. And that's the minute that everybody within this community should stand up and say, hey, you're full of fucking shit. And that's my opinion. I mean, what the fuck? I've already done a video about this. What the fuck have we become as a YouTube fitness community? We got fitness influencers pulling knives on each other. We got fitness influencers playing like they're gangbangers. I know you might have been a gangbanger in a past life, but right now y'all are just dudes walking around with a guy with a camera following you and you're lifting weights and making videos and entertaining people. You know, the days from the streets. I mean, if they're still there, it's not the same. Like you can't go on YouTube and expect to be in an arena with actual doctors and Dr. Lane Norton and all these people. We're not gangbangers. I'm not a gangbanger. I'm a fucking businessman who happens to be in the health and fitness arena, who happens to be a pro bodybuilder. But I'm not going to go for this, yo, 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 west side, west side, I'm going to fuck you up, I'm going to stab you, I'm going to shoot you. Maybe Mark and his teens would have been down with that. But right now, if we're going to battle, it's going to be in court because that's where I'm at in life. And y'all are in your fucking 40s. 
Grow the fuck up. So there's there's that. Um, for more information about everything I've talked about, you know, comment down below. I usually read the comments. And of course, subscribe to this channel. Like this video. Click on the notification bell. And remember, that's not a game. Training intensity is everything. If you want to build muscle, if you want to get better, if you want to go hard, you need to train intense. A lot of pre-workouts, they get you intense. But then what happens? You crash. A lot of pre-workouts, they give you the pump. But then what happens? It wears off. A lot of pre-workouts, they'll give you all that stuff, but it doesn't add to your endurance. I want to be able to lift heavy. I want to be able to feel the pump. I want veins bulging from every single part of my body. I want to lift heavier weights every single time. I want to run farther. I want to run faster. I want to push harder. And I want to get bigger, stronger, and faster. And that's why I created Clash 3D. This pre-workout is next level, featuring 3D pump, Vaso Drive AP, and a lot of other epic ingredients. Guys, this is the pre-workout that you need to take your workouts and your performance and your physique to the next level.